What do you want? I want to see somebody. Who? One of your reverend sisters in this convent. He wants to see her. All right, thank you. Young man, it's been 17 years she's been here, and she's never been visited. So, who are you? I am Jonah. I am a nephew. Mother sent me and it is very important. All right. Have your seat over there. I'll break protocol and call her for you. Thank you, sister. Bless you, my child. He's here to see you. He says it's your nephew. Who are you? I am your... I am your... What is your mission here? I'm here because of your mother. My grandmother is dead. Oh my God. When? Yesterday. Stop crying. She's not dead. She's resting with the Lord. Maybe she is. But the fact that I can't see her anymore is painful enough. Believe in resurrection and you will certainly see her again. Only that then. I wouldn't recognize her. It is written. Now, who are you? Like I said, she was my grandmother. Your grandmother? Yes, mom. Did I hear you say mom? Yes. Sister Mary! 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 Sister it's a long story. How do you think I have time for that? Please. You have to, Matron. Let me tell you my story. Do you know the implication of this? Yes, I do. And I know the penalty. I'm ready to face it. But please hear me out. My mother is dead. 
She was about the only one that knew my story. Now let me tell the two of you. After that, I'll go. All right. I believe you have the right to a confession. Tell me. Thank you, Matron. It was exactly 18 years ago. I was born as Rebecca. I had a twin brother, Joseph. Our parents, Mr. Pius and Mrs. Monica Brown, were the dream of any child. Thank God for a beautiful new day before we prepare for service. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is Dad, Rebecca plays for boarding school. Rebecca, is that true? You play football in school? Yes, Daddy. Don't do it again. Do you hear me? Daddy, but other girls play. Not my own daughter. I want to play like Florence with Mugbami <laughs> and present Nigeria in the Olympics. Certainly not in football. My daughter will not play football, and that's fine. Rebecca. Leave the men alone and come and give me a helping hand in the kitchen. I don't want you to be a bad wife. But, mommy. No buts. Why are you always running away from the kitchen? But Joe never helps out in the kitchen. Rebecca, Joe is a man. You are a woman. It is your duty. Follow me. Go and follow your mother to the kitchen. Go ahead, follow your mother. I saw you playing football down there. You don't tell dad when we get home, will you? Not anymore. I've been watching you down there. You're pretty good. I'm willing to support you and I won't tell her dad. But on one condition. Name condition. That you're not dropping your academics. Uh-uh, I won't. I'm even planning to beat you to first position this session. <laughs> okay, okay, you know what? Consider your plans as just a wish. You know. I don't have a um, football to distract me, I know. Football doesn't distract me, and you know that. Eh. Yeah. Okay. Usman brought these letters now. Thank you. Joseph, jump! Jump! 
Ne pisiyorsun? Kopun ben yemin ettim. Hoy ni vesti. Yeni lag. What of mine? Yeni lag. Bu kos. For mercy. What of mine? Medicine. Let me see. You got your admission letters today? Yes, sir. From Jam? Yes, sir. Where are they? Congratulations, you two. Thank you. I'm really proud of you. Yes, we are. I'm really, really proud of you. We give thanks to God, honey. I'm afraid you're going to have to save your food tonight because I'm taking you all out right now to a Chinese restaurant for a buffet. Yes. 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 So much. <laughs> so much Get dressed, you two. We're going out. <laughs> proud of you. Oh yes. We are really the luckiest children in the whole world. <laughs> children, I think the reverse is the case here. Mm -hmm. We are the luckiest parents in the whole world. <laughs> Honey, what do you think? I think you all are right. Before I met your mother, I fasted for six months. Honey. <laughs> Praying to God to give me a befitting wife and a nice family. God heard my prayers, opened heaven, and sent one of his angels who became your mother. <laughs> Stop flattering me in the presence of the kids. But it's true. I continue to thank God every day of my life for making you my wife. My life, my business, and everything turned around in a very dramatic fashion ever since I met you. It is also the glory of God. I'm so glad to hear this. Maybe I'll become an angel too. Of course you are an angel. <laughs> well, I thank God because he is with us and he will never abandon us as long as we all do his will. It is well. Let's enjoy our meal.
komen. Sorry for yourselves. Oh my God. Keep God out of this. Be my instructions. Please don't hurt anyone. I'll do anything you, you want. Only if you obey. Oh my God. Shut up! Horrible. Yes, boss. Follow him inside and bring every cowboy he has down here. If he proves stupid, shoot him. That's my pleasure, boss. woman up and follow her to her room. Get up. Leave my mommy alone. Hold it. Where is your room? I said, where is your room? Go there now. Don't waste it. Stop staring. Anybody moves? to my husband? What did you do to my husband? What did you do to my husband? Ow! Your husband was a very stupid man. Angry! What happened? Boss, this little Alma wanted to become a hero. Well, some days are like that. Now let's move, let's move. Take the money, let's move. Slow? Yes. 
You know, the trauma did more to her psychology than physical injury. But, Doctor, will she ever recover? She will. But it's a matter of time. Now that our worst fears are over, we will only have to give her time. Worst fear? Yes. We conducted an HIV test on her and thank God it was negative. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes, madam. And I would like to tell you here that God never sleeps. Whatever happened was for a purpose. Thank you very much, doctor. You're welcome. Can I see her now? Why not? Joseph. He's all right. Then why is he not here? Um, he... He went to have something done with Daddy. But, mommy, you've never lied to me before. Why do you want to start now? Have you forgotten that I, I watched Daddy die? <laughs> Besides, Joseph will never leave my side in this condition. <sighs> Mommy. Yes. Is Joseph dead too? No, he's not dead. Not dead. <sighs> not dead. <laughs> should know. Anything wrong? Actually, madam, there is. What again? It's your daughter. What is it again, doctor? Please. Please. I'm afraid the unexpected happened. What, what do you mean? I completely ignored that angle. I must admit it's a professional mistake. Doctor, I still can't get you. What mistake? Madam, I mean a random test we conducted on your daughter has revealed that she is pregnant. No, 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 no. It's not true. Tell me not true. How many doctors? No. Ask God. Only he has answers to certain questions. Oh, doctor, no. you shouldn't have allowed that. The whole thing got to everybody. No. I did myself. No. My primary concern was to save her and bring her out of no, the No, doctor, no! Oh, 
Christian. No, no! Christian! Oh, God! No! 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 Take heart, my brothers and sisters. It is the Lord that give it, and it is the Lord that take it. The tragedy that has just happened to our brother, or our brothers, is a very painful one. Yes, I know. But we must emulate Job so that we do not fall into the temptation of asking God why. God, why did this happen? God, why did that happen? No. Our brother Mr. Brown and his son were servants of the Lord before they died. So God couldn't have abandoned them. God loves them so much, so dearly that he called them to himself so that they will be with him in his kingdom. in my heart. <laughs> oh, mommy, is that, is that really good? Of course, and you know it. Then why me? I'm only 15. I was raped as a virgin. It hurts, it hurts, mommy. I was raped by the monster who killed my father and my only brother. I said that was not enough. I'm carrying his baby. Where is God? Mommy, Where is God? Please don't talk like that. <laughs> so that God will not get angry. Get angry and do what again? What hasn't he done that I should be afraid of? Kill me. Of course you know he can do that. Baby, what you should be doing is to be thankful to God that you're still alive after all the trauma. And you think I care? I'm better off dead. No. Please stop it. You're hurting me. I need you, Rebecca. You're all that I've got now. You're my daughter, my son, and my husband. The only thing that can keep me alive is to abort this thing. About what? About this rubbish, baby. Rebecca, have you forgotten who you are? Well... Maybe I have. For as long as I live, which I pray is as short as possible, nothing matters anymore. Say it, and the Almighty God will do it for the widow. Father, it's my daughter. Since after the tragedy, she's no longer the daughter I used to know. You know, such is expected. She's only a kid. I know, Father, but things are really bad. Go on. Father, my daughter was raped by the same gangsters that killed my husband and son. Jesus Christ. It didn't end there for them. She got pregnant as well. Oh my God. 
And now she's threatening to commit suicide if I don't let her get rid of the baby. What? Commit suicide? Yes, father. She could do it, father. The way she's going about it now, she could do it. My daughter. Yes, father. Tell me, how often do you pray? Every time, father. Every time. But God has abandoned me. Oh, no. A good Christian doesn't talk like that. You are good. I know. Father, what do I do? You will do nothing. Oh, oh Father, she could kill herself. Besides, the baby could turn out to be a criminal too. My daughter. Yes, Father. I can really understand your point. But I want you to remember that the wisest men are the most foolish in the sight of God. The Almighty God has commanded that thou shalt not kill. Of course you know that this is a Roman Catholic Church. And abortion is against the doctrine. And equally a sacrilege. I know, Father, but she could kill herself. I don't want anything to happen to her. It's not only your daughter, but his. Remember that. Now I want you to hold fervently to your prayers and shame the devil. that because I want you to be my attorney okay tell me about this case then uh, I'm pregnant <laughs> so by the way how old are you 15 15 okay go on I was raped by a gangster who killed my father and twin brother I must confess this is the most pathetic story I've heard in recent times. And you're absolutely right to want to abort the pregnancy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It won't be easy, though. Abortion is illegal. But that's why I came to you, to legalize it. You can do it. I'll do everything I can. And it won't cost you a dime. I'll always be here for people like you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's okay. yeah. Please make sure you send that email before you go. My dear, it's not going to be easy at all. I've tried to sound out magistrates and it's like we're in a no-win situation. One, abortion is illegal. Two, you're a minor. And it seems your mother's decision just could nick it. Oh my god. Oh, okay. no. Don't worry. We'll do it this way. Now, excuse me, madam. Sorry, I had a call. Oh, that's nothing. Good. Um, where are her parents? She has only a mother, actually. The gangster that raped her killed the father and the twin brother. Only herself and the mother survived the assault. Oh, poor girl, I'm very sorry about this. Um, um, doctor, I am ready to stand for her. Do it. <laughs> I understand your concern. Uh, since you said her mother is still alive, I think I require her for this. Yes, her mother is so religious. She believes everything should be left for God. 
Well, that exactly is the problem. If in the process something goes wrong, I'll be in for it. And you too. You know we're professionals, and you know what that means. Um, she's a minor, and without her mother's consent, I can't do that for any amount of money. Sorry about this, ma'am. Thank you. I understand you people perfectly, but I would require her mother's consent before I could do anything. And in the absence of that, please forget it. I'm sorry, madam. to ask why me stop crying stop crying there's only one option left though which is you could go to court why well, can't you try out some quacks no no we won't we won't risk your life no matter what happens do you get me yes i'll speed up everything but do i have a chance the right word is we Yes, we do have a chance. It depends on the magistrate, really. I'll try and whip up some emotions in court. And on your part, you should learn to make your tears flow freely as soon as I give you the sign. You do need to. That's silver. Your Honor, I'm Jocelyn Roberts, standing for the complainant. Steve McDonald, Your Honor, for the defendant. Your Honor, as the case involves a very delicate issue, I call for the speed up of hearings so that trial could commence in earnest. Defense counsel, do you have any objection? No objections, Your Honor. This case is adjourned to Tuesday for hearing. As the court pleases. Hello, sweetheart. Wait, you like it here? Yeah. Okay, thanks. So I wanted to ask if I can continue to stay here at least until the trial is over. For sure, why not? There's no other time we need to be together, not just for your life, for mine as well. We need to stay together, think together, and pray together. Dear God, please save me. <laughs> Don't worry. God will save you. But there's something I want you to do. You have to call your mom. What for? She hates me. Don't get it wrong. She doesn't hate you. She loves you. It's just that she doesn't have any choice right now. Besides, you're all the family she's got. You know, that's what amazes me. If she really loves me, she'll help me offload this burden. She has her beliefs. At my own expense. Don't take it too far. You have to call her now. She'll be so worried. Well, let her worry. She will never be as worried as myself who's carrying this monster inside. God, please take control of my daughter in whatever she's doing. Save her, Lord. Your Honor, this girl standing here is only 15. She was raped by a gangster who killed the father and the twin brother. I hope you are not in any way trying to sway this court. Not at all, Your Honor. At 15, she's only a minor. I'd like to prepare the grounds for her, Your Honor, if you'd allow me. The event took place on the 15th of July at 11.30 p.m. The family, one of the very best and very religious, 
The girl and her twin brother had just been given admission to study pharmacy and medicine at the University of Lagos. An exceedingly happy and proud father took his family out to celebrate. On coming back, they were attacked by robbers. Rebecca, you want to continue now? I... It was... It was when one of the robbers pushed my mother viciously that I... I hit the robber. And the fury turned around and pushed me hard and I fell. As I struggled up, the leader forced me to take him to my room. And then, when we reached there, he pushed me on the bed and, and forced himself into me. Ah. Order! And I was a virgin. Your ah. Honor, the trauma of that night could be too much for any client to be coherent enough. I'd like to help her out now. The prosecuting counsel can go on. So, Rebecca, tell us what happened. I screamed in agony. Then? My father rushed in a short moment. And? The devil shot my father. <laughs> go on. I woke up in hospital. Go on. I later learned they killed my brother Joseph too. Is that all that happened? I received the shock of my life when the, the doctor pronounced me pregnant. <laughs> now, my dear girl, why was the realization that you were now pregnant such a huge shock for you? I thought, I thought the ordeal was over. But now? Now the agony has multiplied. Why? I was raped by somebody I never knew. A killer, a sadist, and now I'm carrying the offspring of, of the person who raped me. Now, tell this court, what is the implication of this? It means I'll forever hate my own baby. Your Honor, this woman standing here is the mother of the complainant. And if there is anything that means anything at all to her, it is her daughter, Rebecca. Objection, Your Honor. It should be the duty of this court to determine whether she loves her daughter or not. Objection overruled. Defense counsel can continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Please, I would like this court to hear my client. Go ahead. Mrs. Brown. She is my only surviving child. She is my only surviving family. We both saw our beloved ones die. I was a devoted Christian when I met my husband, who was a good Christian too. We lived under the confines of the Roman Catholic faith. We brought up our kids in the same fears, morals, respect, and worship of our Creator. When the tragedy happened, I almost lost my sanity. But the Bible became my only companion. All the days she was in coma in the hospital, that she even came out of that trance is a miracle itself. Then, like a volcano, the doctor dropped the bombshell. My daughter is pregnant. <laughs> it was unimaginable. I started asking God once again, why? But later, it struck me that God has a purpose for everything. Besides, who am I to question the wisdom of God? I knew my daughter hinted me that she wanted to get rid of that baby. I was afraid. 
I became alarmed. I don't want to lose my daughter. I was afraid because I thought something would happen to her. Because I had, I have a premonition that if she attends it, something terrible might happen to her. I don't want anything to happen to my daughter. The Bible commanded us that we shall not kill. So I couldn't stand by her to disobey God. I love you so much, Rebecca. I don't want anything to happen to her. <laughs> Your Honor, uh, I would like to step up to my client, please. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Has it ever occurred to you that your daughter, Rebecca, could be under temptation? Exactly. Experience has shown that when someone is under temptation like my family undoubtedly is, that the only way is to follow the way of God. And in this case, her God said that we should not kill. Good. Please tell this court, this baby, Rebecca's baby, your grandchild, when this baby is born, will the baby remind you of the robbers? Of course not. It's an innocent child. I'll see it as a blessing to us. It will be like our family has been increased. I'm going to love this baby. I'm going to take care of it so that it wouldn't be a burden to her. I want this God to stop her from doing anything that will endanger her life. I love her so much. Mrs. Brown. <laughs> Rebecca, you see, I don't want you to look at your mother the way you have been doing. Today at the courts, I, I was taught by her obvious love for you. Lynn, I don't want you to believe that. Whatever my mom says is irrelevant. If she's going to this land to make me keep this baby. No. No, we went to court, remember? Not her. Why, Lynn? Why? Why what? Why are women meant to suffer? It's okay. It's okay. Do you really know the meaning of abortion? Yes. Good. Can you define it in your own words? Objection, Your Honor. Objection of a rule. Defense counsel, please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Miss Rebecca. We were in the process of defining abortion. Well, in simple terms, abortion means the surgical removal of unwanted pregnancy. Excellent. Now, you were once in the womb, right? Objection, Your Honor. Objection overruled. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, you tell the court, Miss Rebecca, you were once an embryo. Yes, I was. So, what if your own mother had aborted you. I said the removal of unwanted pregnancy. My mother wanted me as a matter of fact. Besides, I'd have preferred that she aborted me than for me to live and witness the killing of my father and twin brother and the sudden disvirginity by vicious rape. I was preserving my virginity for God and my would-be husband. Oh, look at me now. Your Honor, I want to help my learned colleague here. Well, that will depend on the defense counsel. 
I, I have no objections, Your Honor. My dear girl, do you believe that God could be angry with you should you abort this pregnancy? No. No? Tell this court why. It is true that God said, thou shalt not kill. But he condemns having and keeping issues outside wedlock. I was taught so in catechism. In the Bible, any child born outside wedlock is cursed. And I believe that what I have inside me is a monster. Why do you say so? It's a monster's child. Good trees bear good fruits. I want this court to save me the agony of being a monster's mother, a rapist's mother. Prevention, they say, is better than cure. All right, my dear girl, why do you believe that this baby, when born, just might turn into a monster? Biology tells us that genes carry the traits and character of an individual. And what I have inside me has its father's genes. Please save me, save me the agony of being a monster's mother. <laughs> My daughter, I know she doesn't know what she's doing. Please, God. Thank you, dear. Your performance was really great this afternoon. And I think we have the sympathy and interest of the magistrate. From the look of things, we just might win this case. You really think so? Nothing is impossible. It's Mrs. Brown, you claim to love your daughter. Not claim. I love her more than you can ever understand. How do you mean, madam? No single lady understands the quality of a mother's love. I know you are not yet a mother. All right, I'll take that. Mrs. Brown, in your entire life, have you ever been raped? Objection, Your Honor. My learned friend is beginning to rude. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Brown, in your entire life, I wanted to tell this court if you've ever been raped before. No. That makes you ignorant, too. I put it to you that you can never understand how a rape victim feels. Mrs. Brown, I was raped once. Ah. And had I been given the chance, I would have killed the man that raped me. I would have had to die first than to carry his baby had I been as unfortunate as Rebecca. Not to talk of the fact that the same rapist killed my father and my only brother, my twin brother. Mrs. Brown, if you love your daughter as much as you claim you do, Please append your signature for the abortion of the monster she has in her womb. I will not do that. It is against the wish of God. Mrs. Brown, no living God will wish for an awful act like this. I put it to you that you do not love your daughter, nor care for her. That is enough! What do you understand about a mother's love? That will be all for now, Your Your witness may step down now. Um, Your Honor. I wish to call the second witness. Your request granted. Reverend Father Asobi. Please on, on this Bible, sir. Say after me, starting with your name, sir. I, Reverend Father Asobi. Do swear. Do swear. By the name of the Almighty God. By the name of Almighty God. That the evidence I shall, give, the I shall give. In this case. In this case. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but and the nothing truth. Nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Don't mind that. Father. Please. Tell this court. 
what your church says about abortion. It is a great pity this affair cropped up, considering the family in question and the young girl in particular. There's no way this could have happened without God being aware. Truly, God do not permit this type of sufferings, but he's the omnipotent. Nothing happens without his knowledge. We can do our bit, but leave the rest for God. He says, thou shall not kill. If it is a monster, which I know it wouldn't turn out to be, then the good God will take care of it. He says he will fight our battles for us if only we trust in him. Cousin, Your Honor, I think he says it all. Uh, I have no further need uh, to examine now. My learned friend might have a need, which I doubt very much. But don't <laughs> doubt my learned gentleman. Actually, I have just one question for the Reverend Father. Father, I'm equally a Roman Catholic. Wasn't there that commandment, thou shalt not kill, when God stood by David to kill Goliath? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, may I call on the second witness? Go ahead. Professor Adolphus Okwadike. Say after me. I, I, Professor Adolphus Okwadike, do, do, swear by, swear by, the name of the Almighty God, the name of the Almighty God, that, that, the evidence I shall give, the evidence I shall give, in this case, in this case, before this court, before this court, shall, shall be the truth, shall be the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the and truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God, so help me God. I am a medical doctor. This is my 35th year as a gynecologist. Presently, I'm a medical consultant with a teaching hospital. I also have a private clinic. Please tell this honorable court if it's right to call an embryo a human being. Actually, when the sperm is released into the vagina, it passes through the uterus to the fallopian tube where it is supposed to meet an egg if there is a ripe one. When the fission occurs, it first takes the form of a blood clot. Later it forms what looks like a tiny ball. Then it begins to develop. It is not worthy that the true features of a human being does not manifest in the fetus until exactly 12 weeks. Medically, the fetus is not regarded as a human being until after 28 weeks. So, uh, please tell this honorable court, assuming someone harm a fetus before it's 28 weeks old, could that person be charged with murder? That would be absurd. In this bizarre world, women severally conceive and give birth to creatures that never were humans in the true sense of the word. Until those 28 weeks, no intending mother should ever be certain. Thank you very much, Professor. Your Honor, the Professor has said it all. My client is only eight weeks pregnant, which is a clear 20 weeks short of the expected date. Hence, the assertion, thou shall not kill, does not apply in this case. The fetus is yet to be a human being, and as such, could not be categorized as one. So I call on Your Honor to please save this girl from all this trauma and give her the go ahead to rid herself from this everlasting agony. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Your Honor, I have a few questions for this witness. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Doctor. Professor, please. But you're still a medical doctor. Counsel. The man is a professor. I won't remind you a second time. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Now, Professor, have you ever performed an abortion? Oh, yes. It is like asking me 
if I have drunk water before. <laughs> water! Why? It is because there will be mothers they didn't want them. Professor, are you aware that abortion is illegal practice in Nigeria? Oh, yes. So, why did you choose to break the law of the land? I didn't. How do you mean? For 10 years, I practiced in the state of Michigan in the United States. If you are informed enough, you would know that abortion is a legal practice in that state. It was there that I carried out abortion on an average of 10 every 24 hours. Ah! Order. So, you, Professor, could be referred to as an abortionist. Objection, Your Honor. Objection sustained. Counsel, be very careful. Forgive me, Your Honor. Now, Professor, why didn't you practice your profession? Uh, or rather, let me rephrase the question. Counsel, you better rephrase your attitude as well. <laughs> Order. Professor, tell me, why didn't you perform abortion since you returned to this country? For surely, <laughs> there, there are very many would-be mothers who would rather not have their babies. Tell me. Well, you said it earlier, young man. Enlighten me, enlighten me, or perhaps this court. Tell us. It is not a legal practice in Nigeria. I don't do what is unlawful. Thank you very much. Your Honor, this is the very basis of why we are here. I too pity this young girl here. My learned colleague, might think that I don't have emotions, but I do. The issues at stake, which this court should concern itself with, are the laws of the land. The laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria makes abortion illegal. And despite the pathetic circumstances before this honorable court, there are no exceptions to the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you, Your Honor. In my 22 years as a magistrate, I must confess, this is the most difficult case I've handled. It is a straightforward case. But a girl of 15, full of life and enthusiasm, is going through what could break or mar a future full of hope. In arriving at this judgment, I almost put my job on the line. But Truly, my hands are tied. The court hereby throws out the application to abort the pregnancy. No! Order! This court will, however, prevail upon the federal government to take care of the mother until the baby is born. And thereafter, the federal government will take care of the baby until adulthood. This is my judgment. God!
until the storm comes calm. The worst is over now. And one thing is certain, your baby will never become a monster. But I don't care. Do you know I'm going to have a bastard? Lynn, can I ask you for a favor? Anything. Can I continue to stay with you until I deliver this thing? I would really love to be with you every hour. But your mother needs you now. And I don't love her and I don't need her. Don't talk like that. All those episodes was for the love she has for you. And I want you to understand that. There's nothing to understand. I don't love her and I don't need her. Now can I stay with you now? Oh, sure. Why not? Thank you. I really don't understand why we... Is that Miss Robert's house? Yes, Barrister Lynn Robert's here. Who's this? This is Mrs. Brown. Can I speak with my daughter? Um, hold on a second. Sweetheart, it's your mom. Tell her to go to hell. Please, you have to speak with her now. Over my dead body. Why are you like this? Sorry, madam. She really is tired and she's gone to bed. Will you call back tomorrow? I can understand. Please. I tell her that I love her very much. I will. Uh, and what? I want to thank you very much for all the love you've been showing her. I'm a professional, madam. I'm just doing my duty. Do you usually perform your duties for free? How do you mean, madam? Come on, Miss Roberts. I'm Rebecca's mother. And I know that she doesn't run any account or own any business. Well. Tell her once again that I love her very much. Thank you too, and good night. She said to tell you that she loves you. And I believe her. You can believe whatever you like. But I don't care. Is that Miss Roberts? Certainly, Mrs. Brown. Was that Rebecca? Um, tell her that I'm very happy just hearing her voice. Also, tell her that her mother loves her so much. Miss Lynn, I would like to thank you very much for all the love and care you've been showing her. May the good Lord continue to bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. Rebecca, Rebecca, that was your mother on the phone. Every move this woman makes to reconcile with you, you're busy frustrating it. This has got to stop. I cannot take it anymore. Is that clear? It has to stop right here and now. Rebecca, come back here. Come back here, Rebecca. Rebecca, come back here. Come back here, Rebecca. Sorry I'm late. Oh, it's alright. How is she? She's fine. 
What else can I do? Pray. But I've been praying. Your daughter is something else. She, she's just, she doesn't want to see you. That, that's absurd. She needs me. She doesn't understand that. What do I do? I think we should just give her some time. With time, she'll understand all this. Personally, I don't think she'll understand anything till after delivery. She needs me. She needs me to monitor and nurse her. You need not worry yourself. I'll try my best. I know. But with your profession, it's a burden. I'm not complaining. Sorry, still. Sorry. Should be okay. See the little child. Nobody cares for him. What a lovely child. But the mother won't carry him. Cause her. <laughs> Doctor, please, how is she? Uh, where is the husband? Um, I am the husband. You? Yes, Doctor. Then congratulations. Uh, she just had a premature baby boy. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Father. Can I see her now? Why not? Let's uh... Who is this? Miss Roberts! Is something wrong? What about my daughter? God has died, madam. Done what? You are a grandmother. You have a grandson. Impossible. How that is impossible, madam? Of course. But she's only five months plus. Exactly six months. It's a premature and they're both doing fine. Oh, glory to God. You can say that again. So, where are they? I I'll come pick you first thing tomorrow morning. Oh, is that okay? I can't wait. Okay. Please, we would like to see Rebecca. It's too early to discover yet. Okay, no problem. We'll wait. But, can we see the baby? Of course you can. This way. Is that an instruction? Whose instruction? The mother, of course. What? Oh my God. The mother's instruction? Yes. I want that tag removed now. I'm afraid only the director can give that order. Then take me to the director. Who is this? She's Mrs. Brown. Rebecca's mother. The child's grandmother. I'm Rebecca's mother. I just saw an inscription on her baby and did not say you permitted that. Oh yes, I did, madam. I, your daughter threatened hell if we didn't put that tag. Actually, I personally had to intervene before that tag was hung. You see, your daughter, I'm afraid, is so strong-willed. 
Well, director, I want that tag removed, no matter what it costs me. I'm afraid we'll all have to go confirm from her first before anything. Very well then. Okay then, let's go. Doctor, I've not cited her this morning. Then get her this moment. Right away, right away, right away. Yes, Doctor. Okay. Get her right, right then. Yes, sir, that's uh, the incubator where we get the baby. Okay, she's here. Doctor, she's not in this hospital. What does that mean? It's absurd, but she's nowhere to be found. First, uh, call the security. Yes, sir. Or rather, uh, call the security chief here. Let him meet me here, right away. Yes, doctor. You, uh, get back to the reception. Okay, doctor. Doctor, where is my daughter? Madam, calm down. There's no need to panic. Your daughter must be within the hospital. She was quite happy yesterday, I must tell you. Happy? Now, they're going to promise me one thing, that after delivery, you're going to make up with your mother. Don't worry, Lynn. After delivery, nobody, including you, will see me again. <laughs> what's, uh, um, don't tell me, I know what's gonna happen. You are going to turn into a ghost, right? Maybe. <laughs> you're just impossible. Because I... No. No. What? I'm nothing. I mean, she's not... I'm just worried. She's not here. What could have happened to her? I really do not know. I pray nothing terrible has happened to her. She did say that nobody will see her after delivery. And I didn't take her serious. I'm sure with time she'll come back. <laughs> oh God, please bring back my daughter, please. Yes, madam, here we are. Let's go. And then, in. Regina, I'm sure you're satisfied. Yeah. Let's go. That was how I came here. I sneaked out of the hospital and walked in here 17 years ago. I changed my name to Mary. And you know the rest, Metro. I'm sorry for what happened to you, Mr. Mary. Please forgive me. <laughs> I'm sorry to mother or sister Mary if you prefer that. You see, my grandmother brought me up the best way possible. She gave me everything that was necessary. And she taught me high morals too. I remember I asked her why she named me Jonah. It was then she told me I was born premature. She said when she saw me inside the incubator, she remembered how Juno must have been inside the belly of the fish. She decided then to name me Juno. But all the while, all the while she never told me she wasn't my mother. Until. Thank you. 
Tiana. Yes, Mommy, what is it? The doctor said it's a heart failure. I don't think I'll survive it. Mom, not will happen to you. Not. It's not my fault. God wants me. Jonah. Mom. Promise me you'll be a good boy. Mom, don't do this to me. Don't let me become an orphan. You won't be. Jonah. I'm not your mother. What? I'm only your grandmother. What happened to my mother? It's a long story. I want you to go to a ladies' convent. Take this. That's your mother. She goes by the name Sister Mary now. She's your mother. Recognize that one you see. Her. Give me your hand. I want you to love her as you have loved me. I want you to treat her the way you've treated me. But I love her so much. Understand more than I would have done the same. But your fears are now over. I will become the best policeman in Nigeria. And I will carry out a war against the likes of my father. That's great to hear. But remember, vengeance is for God. That I have heard before. You have to believe. Mom, let us go. Sister oh. Mary, the division is yours. You can stay if you want to. You did not wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Matron. May God bless you. You see, I have known this world. And I'm not coming back to your world. I will always pray for you. God will always be with you. You mean you don't come with me? I'm sorry. 
I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. Mom. Mom. Oh, God. Oh, God. Little child. 